Hi, this is Brittany and you're watching Lock Queen Bee. Hey guys, so in this video, I wanna talk about living with a hearing loss. So if you guys follow me on Instagram, you know that I have a hearing loss. I wear hearing aids in both ears. I wear hearing aids in both ears and I also have like an ear mold. This is called a full shell um, ear mold and basically it's supposed to help with feedback. You'll see news anchors or um, musicians who have something like this in their ear just to protect them from all of the noise with the music that they are playing. And so those are my hearing aids. I wanna share with you all how my parents found out that I was um, deaf or that I had a hearing loss. So I have a twin sister. So what that means is that we should basically be doing everything pretty much at the same pace or kind of like at the same time. And so um, this made it more obvious to my parents that I something was different about me. And so something happened where um, my mom did something and my sister ended up crying and like running to her whereas I like stayed with my toys or whatever I was doing like I didn't react to whatever made my sister react and so my mom and my dad they thought that that was weird and so I guess they like tried like a clapping test or they moved closer to me and like called me like Brittany Brittany and that was how they like realized okay something is different let's take her to an audiologist let's figure out what's wrong that is how my parents figured out that I had a hearing loss. It was a little bit easier for them in a sense because I had a twin. They had someone to compare me to where if I had been an only child, it may have taken a little bit longer before they realized because they, in that situation, my sister did something and I didn't. So that's kind of how they realized that something may be going on and that kind of tipped them off. If my sister wasn't in the picture and she didn't react like that because she's not in the picture, they wouldn't have really thought anything of it. They would have just been like, Brittany, and then I would have like came to them or something like that. And kind of from there, I um immediately started wearing hearing aids and kind of figuring out what was the best type of hearing aid for me, what ear modes were the best for me. So I've pretty much always had full show ear modes. And then when I went into um, college, when I went to college in Virginia, I had an audiologist there and she showed me like this book of like, different hearing aid styles, different ear modes, and I, I had never like seen all of that before. And so at the time I wanted something that was kind of like less visible. To me, it was less visible having like a, um, it's called it in the ear canal um, ear mold. And it's kind of like those tiny hearing aids that people wear, but there's a tube that goes from that type of ear mold into the hearing aid. So you can still see that, but for some reason, I just thought that that was less noticeable. And that was what I wanted at the time. I'll talk about this a little bit later, but I eventually went back to wearing full shell ear mold and that's just what's been um, best for me. In terms of having a hearing loss in the classroom, that has been quite an interesting experience. When I was a younger kid, I had something called an FM system. It was connected to my hearing aid. There wasn't like, a, I don't remember there being like a cord like plugged into my hearing aid or anything like that, but there's some type of technology that connected my hearing aids to this little box thing. I actually used to have them a long time ago and I probably got rid of them because I stopped using them, but it was a little receiver box. So it's kind of like a microphone box and I would have one and my teacher, she would have one, but it would have a microphone on it. And so basically whenever she was talking to the class, she would have that on. And for me, it would just amplify her voice so that I could hear her. So it was basically like she was talking in a microphone that was meant for me, literally. So that was pretty cool having that, but obviously having that technology made me stand out from the rest of my classmates because they didn't have anything like that. What I would have to do is at the beginning of class, I would have to give her the microphone, um, go sit at my desk. At the end of class, I would go and get it. I would go to the next class and do the same thing on repeat. And so I did that up until about middle school. And I think maybe in high school, I stopped using the FM system and I kind of just relied on how well I was hearing the teacher and then um that was pretty much it I didn't really speak up a lot in class I hated talking in class um just because of how my speech is and so I don't really remember how I got oh so what I used to do in high school I think 
kids would give either in middle school or high school people would give me copies of their notes like i would have it was like a designated person who would take notes and they would share their notes with me and their notes would be way better than my notes because i obviously missed some things from not having the fm system so that helped i don't think i'd used that in high school though but i wasn't a bad student in high school either with me being in the classroom i also had extra time on tests and quizzes and stuff like that i don't necessarily know like the logic behind that i think the thought was that or the explanation is that people with a hearing loss they may have like difficulty with like understanding stuff and processing information and so i think that is why i had extended time on my exams and so those are and then obviously i always sat near the front of a class and those are pretty much the only accommodations I can think of that I had in school. I did in middle school have speech therapy lessons that I would go to during like a special block of time where the rest of my class was doing something else and then I would go to my speech therapist and I only remember doing that for like a year or two and then I kind of stopped going. In the classroom it's also how I mentioned the FM system and it amplified the teacher's voice that didn't really amplify anybody else's voice so like if a student talked then i would kind of have trouble hearing them and i remember sometimes the teacher would like give the fm system to the or the mic to the student and they would talk like into it so i could hear them or they would just repeat the question so there was a lot of stuff that went into making that work so this is also related to being in the classroom but i was much older in college, I actually did not use the FM system. I don't recall if I got other students' notes, but I did use something called a transcriber. So this is really cool technology. So basically, I had to download Skype on my laptop and I had like this really futuristic looking microphone. It looks more like a tube of lipstick. And I would give that to my professor and in each class that I had, except for like the discussions where you discuss like the lecture. So I would give the microphone to the professor and then I would call in through Skype and there was somebody on the other end who was transcribing what my professor was saying. And it was the coolest thing ever because literally word for word, they typed what the professor said. And that just kind of made it easier for me to um, understand what was being said. I only used that my freshman year, my junior and my sophomore year in college. Um, so my second year and third year if you're at UVA. I did not um, use that system, but it was really cool. That may have helped in like middle school and high school, but like the technology probably wasn't ready in a sense at that time, but I loved it. Sports, this is interesting. So I pretty much wear my hair nice 24 seven, right? And that kind of includes when I'm playing in sports. It gets tricky though, because like if I'm just, you know, walking around, sitting on the couch, going to the mall, driving the car, eating my food, at the movies, whatever. My hearing aids are fine. Like I'm not like waking up a sweat. So when I played basketball, volleyball or anything else, or if I went for a run or something like that, sweat would get into my hearing aids and that would mess them up. I did have waterproof hearing aids for a while, but those would also like mess up, but it would just take longer for them to mess up. And then I used to have little like sleeves to put over my hearing aids, but that was kind of silly because it's kind of like a sweatband where you st it stops the sweat from dripping down your face, but that band traps the sweat. And so basically it was just like a pile of sweat like sitting on my hearing aid. And so that didn't work out. And so with basketball, what I did a lot was my hearing aids, I would play until my hearing aids went out. And then once they went out, I would kind of like take them out and then I would play like with my normal level of hearing and so basically i couldn't really hear anything unless you like were shouting really loudly or um if you were bouncing the ball so i can hear a ball bounce i can hear the train go by and some other really loud noises are the only things that i can really hear like if i you know how sometimes you talk to yourself i have to talk to myself really loudly in order to be able to actually hear myself it's a little confusing to explain because like when you're talking you know you're talking but in order for me to hear after have to talk really loud and, like, and then I can actually like hear my voice. Since my mom and dad coached my AAU team and my mom was an assistant coach for my high school team, that kind of made sports at that age a little bit easier for me because they knew how to communicate with me. So we really used hand signals a lot. So if we caught a play, like run play two, two, the point guard would put up their fingers and then 
to signal what play we were running and so on. In college, and we pretty much do the same thing, but it was people who didn't really know me. I was playing with other people who didn't really know me. And so college in terms of basketball wasn't as fun as it was in high, in middle school, high school, and AAU, but it I pretty much had the same experience throughout um, all three levels, so middle school, high school, and college. And I have a funny story to share with you. I was on this traveling AAU team and we were playing in some gym where there was like a lot of bands and they were like really, really loud. And for me, because one, I can't really hear that. And then two, either my hearing aids, my hearing aids just didn't pick up like all of the noise or I could, my brain couldn't understand it or my hearing aids went out and I couldn't hear anyway. And so it was funny because my teammates like who had normal hearing, they were like, oh my God, it's so loud. I can't hear. And they're like, I know what you go through. I'm like, this doesn't bother me. Like I don't hear anything. So it was just interesting to see other people for like a game experience things the way that I normally would. And so I just thought that that was funny. So with most people who have a hearing loss, um, depending on like the severity of it and their family and their background, they may also learn sign language. I did not learn sign language as a child. However, I did take it as a foreign language in college. It was quite an interesting experience for me because um, you're not going to really be able to tell because of how I'm editing this video, but like my speech is not perfect and I also have anxiety so I mess up when I talk a lot and so that anxiety I thought would kind of go away with me learning sign language and using my hands to talk instead of my actual voice and that was not the case so when I had to like sign in front of the class or something like that I got nervous and you could see like me like messing up when I was signing and so that was an interesting experience because it was something that I was really excited about and I thought that it would be a good experience for me but it really kind of wasn't so I just took sign language um I think for two or three years in college I wasn't very good at it like I kept tripping myself up over the way to sign things it's really hard to explain but I kind of like mentally stopped myself from being fluent in it. I was overthinking what I was doing. And so I would love to learn how to sign one day, but I don't feel like I'm ever gonna be as good as I want to be. So I've been like looking at little videos online and stuff like that and learning um, things here and there. And interestingly, where I live, there's a guy who works at the grocery store. He is, I think, completely deaf. He doesn't really talk but he signs and so he knows that i have a hearing loss and so he's always signing to me i'm like i don't know what you're saying and then it's sometimes i can sign like very basic things to him like hi how are you or thank you and it's funny because that's all i know and so he'll sign stuff back to me that's kind of like more advanced to my knowledge and i'm like i i don't know what you're saying and i don't know how to sign that and so he just always like laughs at me whenever you know we try to interact and what's cool though is that there's another there's a girl who works there whose family members are um deaf or they have a hearing loss and they sign so she knows sign and some of the other people they like try to communicate with him or they gesture they point and so it's really cool to see people be accommodating to someone who has a disability because that's not something that you always see so i just want to call that out so like with most um people you typically go to the doctor for things with my hearing loss and my hearing aids, that means I go to an audiologist. So when I was younger, I went to the audiologist pretty frequently, probably once a month or twice a month. And basically I would get like a hearing test every couple of months or once a year. I would get my tubing changed, my hearing aid tubing, which is how the sound travels from my hearing aid to the ear mold, which is in my ear. So I would get my tubing changed. And the reason why you need to get it changed is because after a period of time, the tube hardens and it's not comfortable. So you want to change that. Or you also want to change it if sweat or moisture gets trapped in the tubing because that can interfere with the sound. So to get my tubing changed, if I got a new pair of hearing aids, you know, fitting those and making sure that the sound is adjusted. And even if I didn't get a new pair of hearing aids, I did always need to every now and then make sure that my hearing aids were set to the level that they needed to be. I usually prefer to get my hearing aids louder than my audiogram actually said my hearing aids needed to be at because in some situations I didn't feel like my hearing aids were loud enough and so that was something 
that I've just always preferred. And one thing I want to say about that is that there's a setting on your hearing aids where you can basically make your hearing aid adjust to a different environment. And I hate that setting. I absolutely hate that setting. And the reason why I hate it is because I feel like it adjusts the sound opposite of what like my brain wants it to do. So for example, if I'm in a noisy restaurant and someone is talking, I want to hear what that person is saying. Sometimes my hearing aids will amplify the other noises that I don't want to hear and so that annoys me in situations like that so I just prefer to keep my hearing aid on the setting where the sound doesn't change or the, vo the sound, the volume, the program doesn't change regardless of where I am and that just kind of makes it easier for me to um, kind of get by. The other thing that I mentioned with going to the audiologist is getting a hearing test. So if you've never had a hearing test before, basically what you do is you sit in a small booth. So it's kind of like a telephone booth. And what happens is it's, I think it's soundproof so that you can't hear any external noise. And then what you do is they give you like a little clicker so that you can press a button. And then they give you um, a pair of headphones and you put that over your ears and they put it on really tight. And my hearing aids at this point are not on because the point is to test my hearing without my hearing aids. So I go into the booth, um, the audiologist, she sets me up in the booth. She walks out, closes the door, and then there's kind of like a window where I can see the audiologist. And so basically what the audiologist is doing is they're playing sound at different frequencies and different levels to see what I can hear. And so that's always interesting and it drives me crazy sometimes because sometimes I'll think I hear noise but I'm not sure if I did or not and so either I'll press the button or I won't because I'm not sure and so it's just funny because sometimes your brain can play tricks on you and make you think that you heard something and then if you hear something you're like wait did I hear that or am I imagining it and so you know in that last segment I mentioned the situation where say I was at a restaurant someone was speaking and my hearing aids adjusted the volume or the program to where I could hear the the background noise instead of the person who is speaking. And so I want to talk about social situations. So what are social situations like for someone who has a hearing loss? If I'm one-on-one -on -one with someone, I'm very good because you know they're facing me, I can read their lips, I can see them. It depends on where we are though. So for example, if we're walking side by side, that's a tricky situation because you want to watch where you're going, but then you also need to look at the person to like understand what they're saying. Because one thing about me is my hearing aids help me to hear, but I hear so much better when I can read people's lips because when I rely just on sound, it's a little bit harder for me to actually figure out what's being said, if that makes sense. And so that is um, how I am in one-on-one -on -one situation. If I'm in a group setting, that's kind of more difficult. What will usually happen in the group setting is basically you have different people talking and you have some people talking at the same time. For a person with a hearing loss, that is kind of like a nightmare because it's hard to keep up with what people are saying. You may have one person who's repeating everything to you and it just gets kind of hectic. And so because I've been in so many situations like that and I know how draining it is trying to keep up with a multi-person conversation, sometimes I actually just tune out because it's I save my energy when I tune out and like mentally go somewhere else instead of participating because it's so exhausting trying to keep up with what people are saying. If I have my sister with me, she'll like repeat stuff. I'll, I'll just be like, hey, what did I say? And then she'll repeat it, participate in the conversation. Oh, what did that person say? And then she'll repeat it. But if I don't have someone to repeat it, it's a little bit harder. So I might just ask someone, but I may not ask them as frequently as I would ask my sister. For example, I, um, when I go to the movies, I have a hard time hearing what's being said and I have a tendency to laugh when other people laugh just to like make them feel like I understand what's going on or I understand what funny thing they said and so I have that bad habit so I'll go to a movie everybody else will start laughing and then for some reason I start laughing even though I don't know what was actually said but there are some times I actually hear what is said and it's fine but like when I was younger I would go to the movies a lot and I would ask my sister and my mom and my dad to repeat something and they would like have to quickly repeat it so that they didn't miss the rest of the movie and so I kind of don't do that as much now but that was something that um, I had trouble with. 
and interestingly when i moved to new york city i um started going to the movies by myself and there's this one particular movie theater on 86th street in lexington or, or third avenue or something like that they actually have like this um they have like this I i'm gonna call it like a captions box i don't know what it is like it might be like a transcriber, caption transcriber, I don't know. But I went to a movie and I used it and it was the most awkward thing ever. So basically imagine something kind of like on a tripod stick with like this big square thing that like reads out letters. Not reads out letters, but letters appear on the screen. So it's kind of like the um like a ticker or something like that. So imagine me holding something like that, and then at the base of it, it fits into the cup holder. So I basically have to put it in the cup holder and then kind of like arrange it so that I can see what's being typed or written on that little screen. And I can also see the movie. So I remember I used that one time and like everyone was staring at me because they had never seen that before i had never seen it before and it just stands out so much and i definitely made sure that i sat at the back because i knew that that would have kind of been distracting for other people to see and so that's just something to keep in mind um as far as social situations when we go out to movies it's a little bit harder for us to keep up and we may not want to use this device that's meant to help us because of how embarrassing it can be for us. So I am a little bit older now. I have a graduate degree and I have been out of school for at least eight to ten years, something like that. And so now I have a job. I'm not in school. I'm working in the workplace. So what has that experience been like for me? So my first job was um at Harris Teeter in um college and basically i was just talking to people out at the supermarket and that was kind of a difficult experience for me because as you know when you go to the supermarket you usually when you're checking out you give people your phone number so that you can save points you can whatever and so that was kind of like the most difficult part of the interaction because imagine just having people shout numbers at you you can't hear them and you're trying to keep up and because some people would give you their numbers so fast and expect you to like remember or know what they said like even without a hearing loss and that's kind of like really annoying and so that was a difficult experience for me but i only did that job for a summer so it wasn't too bad and then it wasn't like i was depending on that job as my career or my um livelihood you know what i mean and so when i moved to new york city i was still in retail i had a job at a cupcake store and i also worked at the bookstore the bookstore was interesting because it was very similar to the grocery store where you know people are giving you their phone number for rewards and all of that and then there's like multiple people coming and you you have to ask them questions they're asking you questions so it was a very similar experience retail as far as working at the, a cupcake store was a little bit different because when you're in like a restaurant there's a menu there's different items in my particular store there was basically a um a shelf a shelf of cupcakes and then glass in front of a shelf so that like the customers weren't like exposed to the products right and so what i would have to do is pack up the cupcakes in a box behind the shelf the, the glass was obviously glass so you could just kind of see in between the rows but you couldn't hear very well behind the glass and so that kind of made it really difficult to like box people's orders so i would like go to the shelf, box the order, come back, okay, what did you say? And then for some situation like that, I wouldn't always tell people that I was hearing impaired because like who wants to be like, hey, I wear glasses or hey, I have a hearing loss or hey, something's wrong with my leg. Like you don't want to announce that stuff and you kind of like shouldn't have to for people to treat you like with respect, you know what I mean? And so anyway, that is kind of part of why I went back to full show hearing aids because if I have my hair up or if people see me from the side, they notice my hearing aids. And I felt like people would notice full show earmuffs a little bit more. And my intent behind that was to like make it blatantly obvious to people that I had a hearing loss. And so that they would kind of like step back and say, oh wait, there's something in her ears, what's going on? And they would kind of like think about it a little bit because if someone didn't see it or if they just didn't care, they would kind of like talk to you like how they would talk to a normal person. And it comes across a certain way, especially 
when you're in a position that you can't hear very well or you have a disability. For where I am in my career, I actually have a great job. Everything is done via email and then most companies have Zoom and Slack and all of that. And Slack is really great because it's just like AIM or instant messaging. And so that makes it easier to communicate with people throughout the day. We obviously send emails here and there. And so I started out as a customer support rep. So basically I was emailing people all day and email was so much easier for me to communicate with people because all I have to do is literally read what they say based on whatever I know at the time or my training um, background, I know what to say to the user. And so imagine if that was a phone call, I'm on the phone with somebody, I hear 50% of what they said, I have to ask them to repeat it, and they're upset about something that they were charged for. That's kind of like a very tricky situation to navigate. And again, it comes back to, I shouldn't always have to tell people, hey, I have a hearing loss, so can you treat me a little bit differently? Like, okay. So I wanna talk about some bad situations that I've had in terms of having a hearing loss. So I used to work at a bookstore, so I said it was a very similar experience to the grocery store. So I had an Asian woman who kind of had an accident. She came to my um, register to check out. She was trying to give me her phone number. And at this point, I had so many people giving me their phone numbers, not understanding, messing up. And so she said some numbers and whatever I repeated back to her obviously wasn't correct. And I did that like about two or three times. And at that point, she started accusing me of being like racist, basically, because of not being able to understand her. And I literally started crying because like that was not my intent. I wasn't comfortable with saying like, hey, I have a hearing loss or can you like slow down, can you repeat yourself? And then like sometimes I would ask people to write their phone number on a piece of paper and they felt weird about that because like, what are you doing with my phone number, you know what I mean? And then so I would be very dramatic to the point where they would write their phone number down and then I would rip it up in front of them and throw it in the trash can just so that they could see like what I was doing with it. And so anyway, back to the story. And so I just started crying. And then I think I had to explain to her like, you know, I have a hearing loss, I can't hear you. I didn't mean to offend you. And then once I said that, she kind of was like, oh. And then she kind of like realized that like I wasn't making fun of her or anything like that. But I was so like distraught about that and that like the next person who came to my register, like I couldn't stop crying and I actually ended up leaving work. I actually quit that day actually. I didn't leave early. I, I quit that day because I knew that I was not gonna be able to keep that up. The other experience was at the cupcake store. It was late at night. I had like two guys come in with a girl um, they were like Hispanic or something like that and they were obviously into the street life and so I was taking the guy's order and I couldn't hear him at all and so I remember he said something and the way he repeated it to me when I asked for clarification was kind of like very like dismissive and derogatory so like say for example i say um you say can i have two cupcakes and i say what how many cupcakes two cupcakes like that he did it like that i don't like people doing that to me and so he did that and once he did that i knew that this situation was going to be a problem so i continued taking his order and then as i was saying i'm behind the glass the shelves it's hard to hear and so at some point he just basically started mouthing off about me like, oh, she's acting like she can't hear and just saying all of this crazy stuff to his friends, like trying to make them laugh. And so my coworker, she hears it. I end up going to the back to finish up the order and then it's wrong. And then he's just like, tell her to get out the back and da 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 da, I don't want that da 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 da. And so I'm like, okay, my coworker, you can finish them. I'm going to do something else. And so when they left, she was telling me all of the stuff that they were saying and i was so pissed at her because it's like if you can hear what they're saying i obviously have no idea what they're saying if you can hear what they're saying you should have stepped in and be like hey Brittany, there's a situation there's a problem here let me take over this for you or and you can go to the back or something like that they should my coworker. they should have done something like that so when she was telling me what he said like it was cool like it was funny like I, I was annoyed by that. And so I, and I said that to her and she was like, oh, well, I don't want them to make, I didn't want them to make fun of me because I'm fat or something like that. And it's like, yeah, I get it. But that's like not even the same situation. Like you let someone talk very disrespectfully about me to my face without me knowing. And you basically didn't step in and do anything. And so I, 
I I let him know how I, how I felt about that. And yeah, so it was just a bad experience. If you work in customer service, you know how rude customers can be anyway. And if like a person with normal hearing thinks that customer service and working with customers is bad, imagine how it is for me having customers talk crazy and act all kinds of fools and all of that. And so I wanted to share that experience with you to kind of like make you step back and think about um, how you talk to people, how you interact with people in different areas of your life, and how you can be more helpful to someone who is different from you. So earlier I talked about going to the audiologist and taking hearing tests. And so I mentioned that I go about like once a year. The audiologist that I have here in New York City, she's not as good as the audiologist that I had back in my hometown, Charlotte, growing up. And so that is something that's kind of fallen off a little bit. And plus I'm an adult, so I should be like getting my own audiologist and paying for it and all of that. And so she's, she's decent, but she doesn't go like above and beyond like my old audiologist. I went to her two to three years ago at this point to get my second most recent um, hearing test. And in both tests, the most recent one and the second most recent one, my hearing levels were decreasing a little bit. So I was a little alarmed by that because that's not good for my hearing to go down. And I didn't know if it was caused by me getting these new hearing aids because I mentioned earlier that I like my hearing aids to be a little bit higher than what my audiogram says that they should be if I'm saying that word correctly or if that's even the correct word. Um, so when I first got these hearing aids, I think I had them too loud to where sometimes I would hear certain noises and I would kind of have to go like that to kind of like lessen the impact of the noise. And so I didn't know if that was damaging my ears. I would do that a couple of times, like every single day or something like that. I have a funny story. Um, back in the day when I was using my iPod, when I don't have my hearing aids in, I let me grab it. Okay. So when I am listening to music without my hearing aids in, I need to use these earbuds. These are Apple earbuds and they have an ear mode attached to them. And the purpose is to help this fit into my ear better and to also keep the sound in because I basically max out the volume on my iPod or my iPhone. And so you don't want the sound to leak as much as it would without the ear mode. Anyway, so back in the day, my younger brother, he wanted to listen to some music on my um, my iPod. And so he just plugged his earbuds in and he put the, the earbud in his ear, hit the play button. And he was like, oh my God, Brittany, because the music was so loud that it hurt his ears. But for me, like that probably wasn't even loud enough. And so that's just a funny story about like how loud i like things and so um i didn't know if me having my hearing aids set too loud is what was causing my hearing loss to decline a little bit so i think either that visit or the next visit i got my hearing aids readjusted so they weren't as loud so with my hearing aid declining a little bit and even in general with the severity of my hearing loss i I don't actually know which ear is which. I think my right ear is worse than my left ear. So my left ear may be like moderately to um, severe and this might be severe to profound. So basically I can't hear at all. And so with my hearing being at those levels, I kind of already qualify for a cochlear implant. And this was something that I never really thought about when I was younger. I'm not sure if my parents thought about it and just didn't want to go that route, but I am a candidate for a cochlear implant and I'm kind of hesitant to get one. And the reason is because it's one, a huge cost. I'm not sure if it's covered by insurance or anything like that. So it was probably like $40,000 or something like that, something crazy. And there is an adjustment period to them. So basically, because of how I would be hearing with the cochlear implant, it would be using my brain to hear. I, have to, I would have to relearn how to hear again. And I would have to go to these appointments to learn how to use the new device and all of that. And so there's a lot that goes into having a cochlear implant that I'm probably not quite ready for. And so at some point that could be the next move that I have to make to get a cochlear implant. And I'm kind of against getting a cochlear implant because 
I would only be able to get one side done and that's that to me is so stupid so I would have a cochlear implant probably in my right ear and my left ear I would still have a hearing aid and that's kind of like unbalanced to me so I I don't think cochlear implants are as chunky as they used to be but I would have like a chunky hearing aid on this side basically with a receiver it looks like a hearing aid and then I would have a hearing aid on this side and I don't like the unbalanced feeling I don't want to hear way better in my right ear because of the technology I'm using but then I don't want to use my hearing aids in this side because I love my hearing aids my hearing aids are probably the coolest technology I have they're cooler than having an iPhone or the most crazy tech gadget that you can think of. And the reason why I say that is because my hearing aids are Bluetooth. So what that means is that I can connect my hearing aids to my phone as if these are AirPods. So I can listen, I can make a call and the sound will go directly from my phone to my hearing aid. I can listen to music the same way. I can watch YouTube, I can watch movies, and the sound comes directly to my ears. And so I really wish that they had this type of technology when I was a kid because I would have never paid attention in class. And I kind of sometimes didn't pay attention, but can you imagine like kids today being in school with the technology that I have, listening to music in the middle of class and nobody knowing that they're doing that? Like that is insane. Like I would have been doing that every single day in class. It sounds bad when you say that, but that's like, how cool the technology is you know what i mean i think cochlear implants are supposed to have that same kind of technology but i'm just not really excited about the fact that i would only have one cochlear and i don't know that i would like the look of two cochlear implants uh, like on my head and then also i would have to shave my head or part of my hair i would have to shave like probably this portion on both sides if I got bilateral um cochlear implant um just so that they can make the incision and then put in the implant and so that's not something I'm really excited about either you know I just cut my hair um a year ago and if I were to have to cut it again how is that going to be and all of this stuff and so right now I'm happy with my hearing aids I like the technology of my hearing aids I do, the only thing that I need to do at this point is once I save enough money, I can upgrade to the more powerful hearing aids and that will help me with my hearing that will show for example the hearing aids that I have in now they're basically like maxed out in terms of volume so like my audiologist you can probably adjust them a little bit more but there's only so much more she can do for these hearing aids so if I were to upgrade to the next like more powerful hearing aid what levels I need my hearing aids to be at would probably be like 20% of like the full volume of those hearing aids. So that is my next step down the line to upgrade to more powerful hearing aids. And then if necessary, maybe I would consider a cochlear implant. So we talked about a lot in this video and what I want to do to wrap up is give you guys five tips for communicating with someone who has a hearing loss. Tip number one, be open to repeating yourself. So if you're talking to someone who has a hearing loss, they probably may not hear everything that you say. So just be open to repeating yourself. You don't have to speak really loudly. You don't have to have an attitude. Just restate what you said. Sometimes it bothers me when people said, oh, I said, you know, X, Y, and Z. Like they change like the conversation or nature of what they said. I sometimes I would rather people say, hey, you know, I said that. Or people can just say, if say for example, you say, oh, I'm going to the store. Hey, can you repeat that? I'm going to the store. Like you don't have to say, I said I'm going to the store. You know what I mean? I, I know you said it. And so just be open to repeating yourself. You may have to repeat yourself several times. I know that my sister does because I may think I know what you're saying, but you're actually saying something else. And so I've had that situation happen a lot where someone could be saying bike and for some reason, I think they said something else that rhymes with bike. Pike, for example. I may think that they said pike and obviously that had a very different meaning than bike. So you just have to be open to repeating yourself and being comfortable with making sure that I actually know what you said. You know what I mean? Tip number two. When you're talking with someone who has a hearing loss, treat them like a normal person. You don't have to be demonstrative. You don't have to yell at them. You don't have to talk to them like they're less than you or anything like that. Just talk to them like they're a normal person, like they're 
your friend Jenny from down the block and like you've known them forever. You don't have to like go way out of your way to make this person feel like their hearing loss or their disability is an inconvenience for you. Tip number three, learn how to turn captions on. This is kind of a big one because everywhere I go, I use captions. So if I'm watching Netflix on my phone, there's captions. If I'm watching TV, um, like regular TV on the TV, I use captions. If I am watching something on my computer, I have caption. The only exception, I used to watch YouTube videos without caption, and that was because sometimes the captions were like English generated and they're not always accurate. And so that used to bug me because it wasn't helpful if the captions were wrong. And with my technology being Bluetooth and my hearing aid, I could actually hear the sound a little bit better than as if the sound were playing through a speaker. So with a speaker, the sound just kind of like goes everywhere, you know what I mean? It's not directly to my ears and so that makes it a little bit harder for me to hear something that's playing on the TV and even though the volume is turned up because the sound isn't going directly to my hearing aids. And so I have started to turn captions on with YouTube. So if you are a YouTube creator, definitely turn on your captioning settings because those are helpful to people with hearing losses. Know how to turn captions on. So go to your TV, go to the setting, look for CC and turn those captions on. Some of the apps on your phone and maybe your TV, they have a cool extra feature where you can change how the captions look. So you'll usually see captions on the TVs at like bars or restaurants. I don't know exactly why they turn it on. I think it's because the volume's super low, but if they can turn the captions on, so can you. Tip number four, face the person that you are talking to who has a hearing loss. So I can't really have a great conversation with someone who's not really looking at me when they're talking. So you can just be like, hey, Brittany, what did you say? And if I'm looking at you, all I see is your mouth going away and I'm not gonna know what you're saying. And the reason why I say that is because it goes back to what I was saying about when I can't read your lips, I have to listen with my ears to what you're saying. And I don't think that I'm actually good at that. I rely so much on lip reading and caption that if I just rely on what I hear, I'm probably not gonna hear everything or anything at all. And so if you were to do that, look away while you're talking, when you come back, I'm gonna probably make you repeat yourself or I'm gonna pretend like I know what you said and then you're gonna figure out that I didn't know what you said. So always look at the person when you are speaking to them so that they can read your lips. And tip number five, again, I kind of covered this already, but don't dramatically change how you speak when you are talking to someone with a hearing loss. So if you are a very funny person when you talk, don't change your tone to very serious so that it just throws off like the chemistry and like the flow of what you're saying. I don't really like it when people talk like super nice to someone else and then when they talk to me like they're shouting or they're talking they're talking to me like I'm a fifth grader like that's annoying. Just talk in your normal voice maybe talk a little bit slower a little bit slower but not slow to where you're talking to like a child or a fifth grader like I'm not stupid. Yeah, so those are my five tips for communicating with someone who has a hearing loss. I do want to add in one extra tip. So if you know someone who has a hearing loss, they may prefer to text or email instead of taking phone calls. So if you have a friend like that, you may want to consider what they prefer in terms of communication. So I know that when I date, I like to date someone who is a texter. Like I can FaceTime and talk to you on the phone, but I would prefer to text. And something else to keep in mind when you're FaceTiming with someone, make sure that they also can see your face because if they can't, again, they have to rely on their ears and they may not be good at that because they are used to reading your lips or reading captions to fill in what they missed.